Hello everyone, welcome to Geonos Challenge Series, where I dig deeper into uh, geometry nodes to show you the potential of this amazing procedural modeling and animation tool that Blender has. This um, uh, tutorial series comes as a reply to a request from a long-time viewer of this channel, Roman. So uh, here you go, Roman, this is the part two, and also for everybody else, uh, hope you enjoy and learn a lot of from this. If you want to see what's covered in each and every part, you got a brief summary at the beginning. You can uh, uh, check that one out. As for this part, this is what we will cover. Um, some loose ends and a glitch. And for the glitch, uh, quick um, shout out to uh, this viewer, Paul Mulvaney. I sincerely hope I pronounce your name right. Uh, Paul discovered something weird that uh, happens in some cases um, um, with um, this setup. So we will uh, start by addressing that and explaining why it's happening. And then we will go get to the second part, the animation, that it's really, really interesting. Because um, we will learn how to offset an animation, how to... Uh, make uh, each and every line has its own uh, speed uh, and its own delays. So this is going to be really cool. So uh, stay around for that. Also, a quick uh, word of thank you for everybody that is supporting this channel by subscribing and uh, by commenting to the videos. Again, thank you, Paul. Your uh, uh, feedback was really valuable and uh, give us the chance to look at this uh, glitch. Thank you for everybody also that uh, are uh, deciding to purchase the project file from Gumroad. On top of getting a cool project that you can use to do whatever you want with it, you also uh, support uh, this channel and help me keep doing these videos. Uh, about that uh, project file on Gumroad, at the end, I'm going to show you some uh, parameters that I exposed, so you get a chance to look at it. Now I just want to uh, get started with this video, starting with the glitch. So what is it all about? In the first part, uh, by the way, this is where we left it off. Uh, the only thing I did was uh, a little bit of organizing, adding some uh, uh, labels to frames so we can better... Uh, uh, track what is going on. So in the last, uh, left part, we ended up with this result. We have these tracing lines that uh, are bended like this, and everything seems to be fine. But uh, if we play with this uh, um, controller here that decides just how many tracing lines uh, we have or what pattern they have, uh, if we play with this, we kind of get something weird going on. If you look here, at the bottom, instead of going outwards when they bend, they go like this sideways. So why is this happening? I want to explain you first. Uh, at the beginning, I thought it's, it's a bug, but uh, thinking about it, I realized that was a miscalculation on my part. So I'm going to show you what's going on. If we hide the planet uh, object, we can better see what's going on here. And this is the culprit part. As you can see, it forms a circle. And it shouldn't uh, do that. So why is doing that? Uh, let me simply hide this node, that uh, mute this node that is turning the edges of uh, this icosphere here into a mesh. And now it's more obvious. You can see that the culprit part um, has a face. So I'm going to explain you what's going on. We made a, a setup that it's adding a point in the middle of the edges. And then uh, we scaled the position. So we basically pushed these points outwards. And then we smoothed it that curve. And that gave us this result, as you can see here. But not for this part here. This one is acting differently. Uh, and uh, the reason is the face. Because um, having a face changes uh, 
the uh, vector direction for the position. You still get the same points, but they have a different direction starting from the origin. So that's why uh, you get this weirdness happening. So why is that happening? Well, it's pretty obvious. We have this face that is causing the problem. So initially I thought uh, that if we delete uh, the geometry based on edge and then we split edges, we get different edges uh, like this. And uh, if we get that, everything is all right. But because of this face, this is not happening. They stay together. They form a single edge. And because our logic is based on the fact that we take an edge that has two points and we add it as a middle point that then we can uh, select with this mask here to push outwards while keeping those uh, steady because everything is based on that. If we have something like this that has more than two points, it has basically one, two, three points already, the logic doesn't work because we will end up moving this point and this will stay or we will move this point and this will stay put. So that breaks our logic. So I thought that this is a bug because I didn't understand why this happens. But then I realized how the uh, split edge works. It basically splits the edges but keeps the faces. So if you have a face, between some edges, it's not gonna split those edges. It's gonna keep them uh, tied up. So the fix is actually pretty simple. We could change this uh, from edge to face uh, to just delete the faces first. And then we can add uh, another one and use um, this. Uh, so if we change this to only faces, we delete first the, all, all the faces, and then we can do this uh, uh, delete geometry, switch it to edge, and use this mask. And now everything is gonna work just fine. As you can see, no more anomalies. Everything is fine. Personally, I don't think this is the best fix. And uh, the reason for that is that if we keep, uh, a face, something, a triangle like this. We delete the face, but we keep these edges. We kind of end up with uh, path traces like these ones that are not exactly okay. They are too close, I think, but you can do that if you want. If you don't want to do that, then uh, we can simply delete this node. We go back to this uh, glitchy thing. And now we can fix it in another way. So, uh, in order to fix this, we will also add another delete geometry. We will place it here after this one. And we will uh, delete also edges, but we will build another mask for that we will build a mask that will select only the face. So how can we do that? Well, we have this node called mesh area that gives us the area of a face area, sorry, that gives us the area of a face. So we can simply use a compare node and say if the area is greater than zero, meaning we have a face no matter how small it is, then we want to select that one. As soon as we do that, what we do is get rid of the entire triangle uh, that has a face. Because remember, here we, say we delete the edges based on a mask. And the mask is uh, a face, no matter how many faces you have. So, for example, if we increase the number of uh, lines, as you can see here, we will get more circles. But if we activate this, meaning select all these faces that you see here because they are here and they have a value more than a zero. 
if we select all of this and we delete their edges, uh, we will be left with everything else. So here you go. This is the fix for uh, uh, for the glitch. Now we can use whatever parameters we want. Things will be just fine. So here you go, uh, Paul. Here is the fix for that problem and the reason why it's happening. And also for everybody else watching, this is how you fix that problem. Now, um, another thing I quickly showed at the end of the video, uh, but I want to uh, show you more in details. So we have this mesh. Uh, it's good because we used its geometry to uh, uh, create these lines, but it doesn't really look like a planet. We kind of need to add more details to it. So we will subdivide, subdivide this one and let's give it two levels. And also for a good measure, let's go to the end of all this and add a mesh set shade smooth, plug it here. And now we get this beautiful smooth uh, mesh for the planet. But now the lines are floating in the air because uh, as probably most of you, if not all know, subdividing a mesh kind of messing it up with its volume, making it smaller. So how can we make these points uh, stick to the mesh? Well, there is an easy fix for that also. Let's add a geometry set position. So geometry set position. By the way, sorry about the voice. I know I don't have my best voice to, on me today. I'm a little bit, uh, how you say? I have a sorrow throat, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's move the points, these points that uh, are the end of the uh, lines. First of all, we need a selection for those points because right now we move everything and we can use this one that we created here that it's selecting the bending point, but we want to select the opposite, meaning all the points that are not the bending point, the middle point. So we can just invert this mask. A quick recap, uh, we subdivided these segments that form the lines that have two points. We added, we resampled them to have three points. So we have a point in the middle. We then selected that point looking at the index of each spline and saying, if the index go like 0, 1, 2, we care about the index in the middle, meaning the 1. So this is how we selected the middle point to bend the arcs. And now we are just inverting that mask to select the other two points. So now we have them selected. We just want to make them stick to the new mesh. And for that, we can use um, this um, ge uh, geometry proximity node. We need the data from the subdivided mesh. So the data from here. Wow. So this will be our target. And then we can use the points position. You can use the faces also, but I'm gonna use the points. And we plug it into the position. And what that will do, it will make the points that were in the middle layer, find the closest point they have on this mesh and uh, take its position. And that's going to give us this result, as you can see. So that problem is also fixed. The last thing that I wanted to uh, do on this is to turn these uh, lines into a mesh. And that's kind of an easy thing to do. Now we have a curve, so we can do a curve to mesh here at the end. And then we can add a profile to this curve. And that profile can be anything we want, uh, any curve we want. I'm going to use a circle, plug it here. First of all, we don't need that much resolution for this. So let's do like four points. And of course, let's decrease the radius of this quite a bit, even this is too big. So let's make it like this. 
So now we have a geometry to this. That means we can add a uh, material. It can be on any object. Um, I tend to put uh, the material on a separate object. So when I work on the materials, I don't have to switch between objects. I just select the object that has all the materials. So we can plug it here and we can have a material for this. Right now, I have some predefined materials here on this mesh. Simple uh, principle BSDF with just some colors. So let's make those blue, whatever. So if we go to material preview and we hide the wireframe, we can see the material working. Awesome. So I guess now it's time to move to the interesting part, and that is uh, the animation and to add the tracers. Like I said, we have a bunch of uh, things happening. First of all, let's add um, a tracer that is going to follow this curve. And as you, you saw in the animation, it's not just going like this. It's also uh, basically creating a fragment that it's moving and then goes like this and moving and goes here. And at the end, it's just disappearing while uh, appearing here. So how can we do that? Let's, uh, let's start by adding something here. Let me save. So what we want to add? Well, we, um, we have a curve here till this point. Uh, after this point, we have a mesh. So let's um, just add this data here like this. And I'm going to move this point up. And I'm going to create a new frame. And that's going to be our tracers. Awesome. So now basically we du duplicated uh, all these splines. And we want to do something else with them. We will start by adding some um, mesh to them. So we just see what's going on. Uh, we have a um, curve, curve to mesh here and we will do the profile thing and again we don't need much resolution here i'm gonna plug it here just decrease the radius quite a bit maybe something like this so we can easily see it and let's just add another material so we can see that it's something different. Let's put the red one. And now every single uh, tracer has a line. But we want this line to behave differently from uh, what we have right now. We want to make it grow from one end, get a certain length, move on the spline, get to the end and then just shrink and disappear so how can we do that well we can use this uh, node called the trim curve plug it here and if we start to play with the beginning of and end of this we're gonna get this result this is the start and this is the end so basically by playing with these values so let's say we start at zero, we can give it like this, some length, and then we start to play with this, and then again with this, and again with this. As you can see, we create the impression that the lines are moving and keeping a certain value. So how can we make this an animation? Well, if it's an, an animation, we need the frame. So let's just uh, uh, do that. Let's add the frame into the equation and now we have these sliders from 0 to 1 so let's create a loop in the 0 to 1 range and I'm going to use the warp for that let's start with the maximum of 1 
and minimum of zero. And let's plug the frame here. Control H to hide the outputs that we don't need from this node. And let's plug it to the end and see what's happening. Right now, it appears that nothing happens. And the reason for that is that we basically passed the frame one a long time ago. And everything happens here between frame zero and frame one. So let's fix that. We still need the speed control anyway. So let's do a multiply and let's decrease the value. So basically now we split this frame number into a value that is going to be uh, usable here. And we get this result. Let me make the animation longer, something like this. And as you can see, we get this result. And if we decrease this value, something like this, for example, we get this result. So we are getting there. The idea is how to um, make the lines keep a certain length and leave the start. So let's um, let's fig uh, let's figure out this part. We have this output. If we plug it here, uh, remember the way this works is by playing with these values. So the length of this line is basically the difference between this value and this value. See, we can make it longer or shorter. So let's do a difference between these two values by adding a math node, switch this node to subtract, take this value, plug it here, and play with the animation. And now this value will control the length of our lines. So let me turn this into a green input so we know this controls something and this controls something. So now we have this animation here. Awesome. We kind of fixed uh, this part. So we did this uh, basic animation. But now we want to do something with this uh, to add um, a bit more interest to the entire thing. And what we want to do is um, give each segment a unique speed and also a delay. Because right now everything starts at the same time and moves at the same time. So how can we do that? Let's think about it. If we want to vary the speed, that's kind of simple. Uh, we can do on utilities um, random value. So let's say we will make some of them move like this and some of them move like this. So we will have uh, some random value for each and every uh, spline that we have here uh, between 0 0.01 and 0.1. So if we plug this one here, check out what happens. Some of them will move faster, some of them will move slower. So that's going to be the thing to do if you want to vary the speed. I actually thought that uh, giving the idea behind the project, having them move at the same speed, it's going to be uh, actually what I want. But if you want to add a uh, speed variation, this is how you will go about it. How about adding a delay? How can you, we add a delay to this entire setup? Well, that's going to be uh, fun to make. Uh, have any idea how to do that? Well, I'm going to show you. Right now, everything is playing with this string curve that it's uh, hardware coded to be clamped between 0 and 1. So, for example, if we uh, disconnect this part and this part, 
and we try to put like 10 value here, nothing happens. As you can see, we still stop at one because what we get with this uh, node is um, like you see here, a factor between zero and one. So zero will be the end, the start of the curve, one will be the end. So if you put 10, it doesn't matter. It still has an end and it can go beyond that one. It's not gonna wrap around like this. And we can use this to our advantage because right now we have a warp that goes from zero to one. But what happens if we increase for this for 10, to 10, for example? Let's play the animation. As you can see, nothing happens. Oops, the line appeared, and then nothing happens. And then the line appeared, and nothing happens. And the line appeared. So you get the point. Basically, this node will uh, just go to 10, and then we'll go back to zero. So everything that goes above one will be perceived as a delay in our animation. So if we want to add a uh, unique delay to each spline, I guess it's uh, easy to figure it out right now. You simply add a random value and you say, if you want some of them not to have uh, a delay, you can put one and you can put a maximum to whatever you want, like let's say 20. And now we can plug this one to the maximum. So as soon as we do this, check this out. We have a delay and we can play with this seed to get different effect. Awesome. Of course, if you don't want to have a, a lines that have no delay, you can increase this value. So let's say we do something like this. And now we will have made sure that all the lines will have at least some delay. At the end of the video, I'm gonna show you what I did for the procedural setup to uh, uh, play with this value. But right now, before we end up, I want to, um, Show you something else. So right now we have this setup. Uh, let's say um, we go to frame one and we get this animation. What happens if we want to uh, decide when to start? Oh, before we do that, um, I almost forgot. As you can see, we get this weird thing going on uh, where the lines don't actually uh, follow the spline. So why is this happening? Because uh, we use the data that comes out from here. So why are these segments not following the line? Remember that we got these segments that are consisting of only three points and everything else, it's, uh, this curvature is given by the way we play with the handles of the curves. So this is actually the data that we are using. One point, two points, three points. So this segment, it's actually consisting of three points. So that's why it's not having enough data to uh, actually follow this plane. So in order to fix this, we can do a curve, uh, a resample curve, we can plug it here. And you can see if we increase the resolution, this will follow the spline, or we can do something based on the length and to a point every 0 0.01 meters. And then we get this that looks a lot nicer. Cool. So we fixed that problem. Going back to what I said, what if we want to uh, decide when we start the animation? We don't want to start at frame one. How can we do that? For that, let's go to uh, the frame. The idea is to control this uh, input frame. So let's say we want a value. 
that will be our uh, starting frame. We can use an integer. So let's say I want to start the animation at the frame 24. I can build a condition that goes like this. Compare, switch this one to integer, take this one and say if it's greater than or equal frame 24, then start the animation. So we know this compare node is going to give us a 0 to or 1 value, 0 if it's false, 1 if it's true. So if we take this value, 0 and 1, and we multiply it by the frame, what's going to happen? As long as this condition is false, we will multiply by 0, meaning we will get 0 here. As soon as we uh, have this condition uh, coming true, we will multiply by 1. Giving, meaning we will get this frame here. So that means that until frame 24, we should stay put. Well, of course, as soon as we connect this one here. So we start at frame one, nothing happens, and nothing happens all the way to frame 24. And at frame 25, we start our animation. Or it should. Let's see if it happens when we play the animation. Yep, it does. So now we have this controller for the animation speed. Awesome. So let's get to the final part and I'm gonna show you the parameters of this project. Okay, so this will be the finished project, the one you can find on the Gumroad. And this is the uh, section that we care about, the animation trace routes. Here we have a bunch of parameters. And you have this uh, square bracketed letter that's defining a section like hologram. Hologram motivator, that will be these uh, points right here. And then you have the flight lines, FL, you can see is the initials. And after the flight lines that are this bending line that we worked uh, the previous video, we have this um, flight line tracers. So this is the section that we care about. And uh, this one uh, has this control here. It says if we hover over it, the length of the flight line tracers. So sure enough, if we play with this value and we get closer, we can see what's going on here. Um, we can increase the le length of the tracers. I decided to leave it uh, a static value. Uh, of course, you can play with that. I'm going to show you in a moment. What else can we do? We can um, uh, decide on this, the thickness, and that's going to increase the thickness of the tracer. And we have this start frame where we start the animation for the flight line, like I just showed you. The speed, that's going to be the same for every, every line. I showed you how you can make that uh, variable if you want. The delay, you decide how many frames you want the delay. And of course, you can change the seed of the delay. So uh, you get different animation patterns. So if we look at this, starting with this uh, flight line uh, length, we have it uh, here. <coughs> As you remember, we subtract it from the animation data, uh, what comes out from this warp node, a value, and that value is here. Of course, nothing stops us from adding a random value to it if we want it like we did for the all the other parts. Uh, if you want to do that, you can do that. Uh, as for the thickness, I just um, uh, remapped this value because it was 
uh, way too big. So I basically divided by 100 this exposed parameter. By the way, in order to expose a parameter, you just add the group input anywhere in your scene. And you have this empty socket here. And you can just drag a value here. It's going to connect it. And then you can go to press N and go here into the properties of the group. And you will find your new uh, connection here. And you can uh, change the type, change the name, add a tooltip. If it's an attribute, you can give it a default name. You can specify the range and all that good stuff. So this is how you would go about adding a parameter. What else we have here? The start frame. Uh, that's easy enough. Uh, where we did this at the end of the tutorial. Uh, basically, we add the group and this number, the start frame for the animation. The thing that I haven't showed you is uh, how to make sure that the animation doesn't start midway because um, with our setup, we, it's true we start at a certain frame, but we don't start the animation at the beginning. It's just looping and then it's changing from zero to whatever frame we have there. And in order to avoid that, we can take the frame and we can subtract the starting frame that we decided. And that's going to make sure that when we reach that frame, 96 in this case, we are actually starting at frame zero, meaning we start the animation from start, not uh, midway for some of the values here. So this is something I forgot to show you in the video, but this is how it's working. This is how you can make sure that you add a start uh, to the animation. And when you start, you start at zero, not at some weird point. Okay, so for the delay also, again, it's simple. Is just this value that we added here. One thing I wanted to make sure that, um, as it says here, uh, if we want no delay, we start at zero. It made sense to start at zero, not one. I added this uh, explanation. We control the, the random value here for the maximum. And, um, <coughs> sorry, if you have uh, a minimum for the random of one and a maximum of one, basically you get only the value of one, meaning no delay. So this is what I did here. And in order to make it more uh, intuitive, um, the delay of zero gives no delay. And the way to do that was just uh, add one to the value of zero. So here we have one, one, but at the outside, one, it's actually zero. That means no delay. Hope I explained that in a way that makes sense. Um, we have the delay seed. It's basically just exposing the seed of this random value node. And then we have this uh, thing that we added now that has no meaning. So ignore that one. So that is uh, all for this part. The next part is also going to be really cool. We will see how we can send data to the shader to get these points that you see here. Uh, we want to uh, send the data of the first point to the shader and the last point. Uh, so we can do a bunch of cool stuff with it. We also want to shade, uh, send the data about uh, these um, tracers to the shader. So that's going to give us uh, the opportunity to do a bunch of stuff. So let me find uh, another frame in the animation. Okay. As you can see here, as uh, we approach an end, we start the animation. We have uh, this is an end point, and then we start animation. And we have this point going here. And if we look at some other places, I want to find a good spot where we have just one spline. It's going to be easier to see. So something. Oh. 
like here maybe. Yeah, this one. So let's see what happens with this one when it starts to animate. Yeah, this is a nice one. So when we start the animation and the tracing starts, we get this uh, blue uh, circle, blue spot appearing that is fading away. And as this one gets closer, it's turned into a red, a red point, as you can see in most of them. So that means we have to send some data to the shader. Um, the data for the first point, uh, the data for the end point, and we also have to send data about uh, the tracer. So these points will know when the tracer is closer, so if they can uh, do a bunch of stuff like disappearing for the red spots or the, for the blue spots to appear, uh, stuff like that. Uh, it's more visible in the demo that uh, I showed you at the beginning. So. Make sure to check this one out. And at the end, I want to thank you all of you for um, uh, looking at these points that we uh, observed here. And also, I want to thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, things that you didn't understand and you would like to understand, don't hesitate to post a comment. I will try to answer as fast as I can and uh, give you all the information you need. Until the next video, have a nice day and happy blending.